simple example. Number one. So number one, you have the square root of 5x plus 6 equal to x. The square root of 5x plus 6 equal to x. Right? Now, when you're solving an equation like this, the first objective is to remove the square root sign. That's the first objective. Right? So to do that, we square both sides. Okay. The good thing is in this case, we have a monomial on the right hand side, so it's very straightforward. So you end up getting 5x plus 6 equal to x squared. Now because we have got an x squared term on the right hand side, that's a clue that you have to create a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. At this stage, you know how to solve by factorization. Right, so this becomes minus 5x minus 6. So if I take the 5x and the positive 6, I'll get that equation. Then I can factorize the trinomial. So that will be x plus 6, so my, minus 6 rather. Would be x minus 6 times x plus 1. Alright? Then, obviously, what this means is therefore means that x will be 6 or x will be equal to negative 1. Now, whenever you are solving equations of square roots, when you get to the solutions, you may need to test the solutions. In fact, you have to check if both solutions are valid. Sometimes they are not valid because the square root of a negative number is undefined. So if I substitute x there, if I get a negative number inside the square root, it means that that value of x is going to make the set invalid. Now because of that, we have to check our solutions. Every time you have got an equation, okay, an equation of this type, which has got square root, you don't just solve and then you carry on. You have to check your solutions. Because sometimes one or even both can be invalid. All right, so if I do the checking, okay, when x is equal to 6, okay, the right hand side will become the square root of 5 times 6 plus 6. And this will be equal to 6 on the right hand side. So if I simplify this, I'll get the square root of 6 equal to 6. And I'll get 6 equal to 6. Okay? So for this one here, it means that x equal to 6 is a valid solution. Because it's giving me a real number inside the square root. Okay? Now if I... Test x equal to 6, I also have to do it when x uh, is equal to minus 1. Okay? So if I substitute, so that will be the square root of 5 times minus 1 plus 6 equal to, now in this case it's going to be equal to minus 1, because we got our x as a negative 1. So if I simplify inside, I'll get the square root of 1 equal to minus 1. Now, generally, because we don't have a plus or minus here, the square root of 1 is, is a positive 1. So what that means is x equal to minus 1 is an invalid solution. Okay? So in the end, we have to make a, uh, a final conclusion. So we say, therefore, x is equal to 6. That's our final answer. Right? x equal to 1 is going to become an invalid solution. So we can, I can write here, not applicable, but I also wrote down there that therefore our solution is equal to what? To 6. So whenever you've got a said equation, because the square root of a negative number is undefined, you have to test both solutions. Then you make a final conclusion about the solution. Yeah. Generally, 5 marks. Generally, 
there will be a mark allocated for rejecting one of the two values. So you have to indicate that the, the other value is invalid. Okay? Now this is the simplest case. Now let's move on to one which is slightly more complex. Then, but we have got a question besides this question. Okay, if you don't have a question, means you are following. Right, so let's move on to another one, right? A more complex one, okay. like number four, right? But number four is not that complex. I want you to create the binary. Okay, number seven. Number seven. Okay, so that's five x plus one. So 5x plus 1 equal to 2 square root of 5x plus 1 square root of 5x plus 1 then there's a plus 12 outside the square root right so that's what you get there mm -hmm. right. these questions I took them from uh, the PDF that, that I sent you on quadratic equations I hope you saw it right that, that's a very nice resource. Okay, it's a treasure. Right? You have to look up and like and take. Yeah. Right. Because this topic, it's very important until you write metric. Okay. The topic on quadratic equation is very important. Not, not only is it tested on its own in metric, it is also tested as part of other topics. So it's a very important topic. All right. So we are here now. Now this is slightly more complex than the first one. So the first thing is to isolate the set. Okay, that's the first thing. So we'll take the 12 to the left, so we'll get 5x minus 11 is equal to the square root of 5x plus 1. Okay, then we need to eliminate the square root sign from the radical sign. So we square both sides. But now for, for this question here, we have a binomial. We have a binomial here. Okay? Now, when you square both sides, be aware that this binomial 5x minus 11, it's one number. It's one number. It's only that you don't know the value of x. Therefore, when you square, you square it as one. So you put the binomial in brackets, then you square. Okay? So it becomes 5x minus 11 all squared. This will be equal to the square root of 5x plus 1. Now, this step of squaring both sides is always uh, given a mark. So you never skip this. Right. Whilst I'm here, I just want you to be aware that in this class, in the near future, I don't expect anybody to, 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 to simplify from this step to that's the, this part here, and write that as 5x squared <laughs> minus 11 squared. Right? I have seen this happening. Okay. Or someone might be able to put the 5x in brackets like that and still write it as 5x all squared minus 11 squared. This is wrong. Okay? Once you do that, you are going to get a zero for further test. Maybe, yeah, you will get a zero for the whole test. I'll give you a zero. Okay? So, make sure you are aware that the moment you put a binomial on one side when you are solving these equations, you put the, the two terms in one bracket. Then you square that bracket. So, from here, you will end up getting 5 bits, and I hope everyone knows foil here. So, this will be... 5x minus 11, so I'm going to skip that step where you use foil. So it will be 25x squared, then you get minus 55x minus 55x, so it gets minus 110x plus 121 is equal to 5x plus 1. Uh, by the way, I hope you know that when you Simplify this 5x minus 11 all squared. You get a perfect square trinomial. You should know that. Right? The perfect square trinomial, you just square this first term here. The middle term will be the product of these two times two. So you get that. 
always. It's a perfect square trinomial. The last term could be the square of the second term of the binomial. Right? So, if you decide to use FOIL, that step is not allocated a map. Right? So we are here now. Then, we need to create a quadratic equation. So we get 25x squared. I bring that 5x, we get minus 115x. Bring the 1, we get positive 120 equal to 0. Now we have a standard form of a quadratic equation. Okay? Now, this is given a mark, the standard form. Okay? From the standard form, now, of course, we have got many methods of solving. So far, we have solved by factorization, which is the most common one at this stage. Right? I introduced the quadratic formula uh, yesterday. You can solve this using the quadratic formula. Right? But I'm going to try to factorize it. There's a common factor, right? Which is the 5. So I can write it as 5 times 5x squared minus, that will be 23x, right? That will be plus 5 into that, that is 2, remember 2, that's 24. So that will be that. So, and then you divide both sides by 5. So our simplified quadratic equation will be 5x squared minus 23x plus 24 equal to 0. All right? Now, can you factorize that for me? Factorize this trinomial. <laughs> Factorize. I never say it can be factorized. I say it can it be factorized? Huh? Is it possible? Is it possible to factorize? Sorry? No. I'm saying factorize. Can you factorize? Can you factorize that? Are you sure? Have you tried? Uh, uh, listen, uh, my question was factorize. Right? Can you factorize this? Have you tried? All right, okay, let's let's just do it together. <laughs> Why would you say you want to All right, can I have your attention? Coefficient of x squared is 5, constant term 24, 24 times 5, 120. All right, then you just need two factors of 120 that can add up to minus 23. All right, so you need to know all the factors of 120. All right, you need to know. Is there anyone who has managed to, to, to factorize? Yes, Kabir, what I'm telling you? 3 and 8 over 5. But you see now, you have solved, you have not factorized. Yes. <laughs> what are the factors? Okay, thank you for that. So, 5x minus what? 
and talk about the vectors. 5x minus what? 8 times x minus 3. Alright. Okay. Uh, listen. So, this step of getting the vectors is also important. Okay? Your standard form. So, let me just take the correct the key steps. This step here is very important. Right? Then your standard form either here or there. Okay? It's a class exercise. So, you must write class exercise. Tomorrow I'll start completing the square from the beginning of the lesson and so on. So today we'll just polish this up and then we are done. Number 10. Number 10. Okay, let me zoom in. Okay, that's number 10 there. 2 times the square root of x minus 3 is equal to x minus 3. Can you do that, please? It's a class exercise. So, in your method, you must write class exercise. Don't start doing it without writing it. You must write with the pen. I don't want to see anyone writing with the pen. Your hand must get used to writing with the pen all the time. Okay. Yes. When you write with the pen, it's not allowed to write with the pen. Making a mistake is fine. You know what? I think there was an intention of the session which was created in the lower grade that you are not supposed to make a mistake in there. That, that's a wrong mentality. Making a mistake is a good thing. You learn from that mistake. Okay? But your hand must get used to writing.
Can I have your attention? 